so let's All right, Daisy, do you want to do the roll call? Sure. So um, let the record show that all council members are present. Um, and actually, I have to do roll call because of the teleconference. So um, Vice Mayor Rogers? Here. Council Member Sawyer? Here. Council Member Combs? Here. All right, and thank you, Julie, for, for joining us from uh, New York, for, for those of you who didn't hear. Uh, Julie is there uh, solving California's housing crisis uh, in the Big Apple. Uh, so we appreciate that. <laughs> they um, have some good ideas here. Yeah. So we'll we'll go on to public comment. But first and foremost, I think uh, one of the things we had talked about in the very first meeting was uh, trying to run this committee in a way where we tested out some of the open government aspects that we are really preaching and putting into this ordinance. And I think that uh, from the comments that I've heard, uh, from folks both in email and phone calls and, and in individual meetings, uh, clearly this one fell flat. Uh, so I do appreciate of that standard, I should say. Uh, I do really appreciate staff finding an, an alternative location. Uh, hopefully next time it's a little bit easier for folks to find. Uh, and I do appreciate um, the advanced time in terms of the posting of the uh, agenda and the documents. Uh, I'm going to ask for three specific things for the next meeting that I think will help to address uh, some of the concerns that I heard. One is uh, we did a really good job of following recommendation 2.2B, expanding the use, or excuse me, 2.4B, the sites for city meetings, expanding them. Uh, we need to also be utilizing 2.2B, expanding the use of the city's email lists and mailing lists. Uh, we did have the documents up in time uh, on uh, Legistar, uh, but not on the city website, not through our email list. So uh, I'm going to ask that next time uh, with our 12-day lead time, we send out the agenda and the supporting documents through those lists as well. I also think we need to put it on the website. Uh, and the current Open Government Task Force website says that the committee is inactive. I'd like us to update that to reflect that we are doing things and that this is our current agenda and what our supporting documents are, I think that'll be helpful. And then third and final, uh, I can't keep everything in my head from monthly meeting to monthly meeting, so I oftentimes go back and rewatch the video. In doing that for preparation for this meeting, uh, I found that the video from our first meeting in October is up on YouTube, uh, but not on the city's website, and that needs to be addressed. And then our second meeting from November is nowhere to be found. Uh, so I want to make sure that we have that updated as well, and obviously the meeting tonight gets put on there. Uh, so my apologies uh, to folks who were trying to be more engaged with this. I think with those three things, we'll get this right by the time we're done. Uh, any questions? Kalua, Danielle, Sue? Yeah. So you want to utilize the former Open Government Task Force website and not the new subcommittee website? If there is a new subcommittee website, I apologize. It is not what is linked to on the web on the city's <laughs> aggregate website. So we'll, we'll, we'll figure that one out. We'll yeah, because the the links that I that I at least found, and I tend to think that I'm a tech savvy millennial, uh, took me to the inactive page. Okay. So I know that that probably happened to others as well. Yeah. So is that clear? Yeah. Cool. Uh, we'll go on to public comment then. Go ahead, Dwayne. And, and I, really fast, I do have, to, there's a microphone up here, uh, and I don't have access to a clock, so I'm, uh, you, you're pretty good at self-regulating yourself, uh, Dwayne. Go ahead, in three minutes, go ahead. Hello, my name is Dwayne DeWitt. I'm from Roseland, and I wanted to thank you for being here, having your meeting in our neighborhood. I also wanted to start on a positive note. Merry Christmas to everybody, and happy holidays, and say that if you look right over here, that drum, Ram's drum line, that's kind of what I'd like to see the theme for this whole thing. Drumming up more information and interest, sharing the information with the community better. So earlier we were talking about how some people may not have known where to be. I think that if you keep the opportunity to come back here that you just try for the gymnasium that has the address right on the side. It's right there on West Avenue. You can see it in big letters and people will know to go right there. We've had some meetings there previously and I believe that would be very helpful. The next thing is 
I was hoping that you folks would begin a process that was actually utilized in the past rather well. And it used to be that whenever communications were made to the city council or the city manager, you could find a copy of those communications relatively easy for the matters on the agenda of a city council meeting or even the planning commission or others, there would be a spot in the binders that were communications. You could see what was going on. So last night at the, um, excuse me, two nights ago at the city council meeting, I mentioned that uh, our US Congressman, Mike Thompson, took the time to write a letter to Santa Rosa City about our efforts to have a Roseland Veterans Trail just over there, a few hundred yards away, with a Roseland Veterans Grove and a healing garden. And yet I think because it was just addressed to the city manager that it's not available. I can't find it anywhere, that letter. And I'm like, it should be something that the public could have seen already. It's already a month ago and I didn't find it looking on the internet. But then I'm a bit of a Luddite and I don't have home computer and home internet. So um, with that in mind, there used to be a computer on the front desk at the city and staff said they didn't want it there because nobody was using it. But that's because like this meeting tonight, it was under publicized. Folks didn't know that you could go to that computer, find your items and then maybe print it out. That would be a really helpful thing at the city hall office. So. What I'm talking about is all helpful things for Christmas. I'm, uh, my Christmas wish is to find the copy of the letter from Congressman Thompson and maybe get that computer in on the desk at the city hall office. Who would be next? Hi, my name is Fred Krueger. I'm from the Hughes Avenue neighborhood group here in Roseland. I have three comments. First, there's a difficulty in working with the city often because there's no institutional memory in the departments. Specifically, uh, beginning around the year 2000, uh, our neighborhood group developed petitions and work to develop a Roseland Creek Park because we're the single most underparked area in the city. Uh, and it's huge, the disparity. Uh, for perspective, uh, the general plan specifies that there should be six acres of parkland uh, per thousand residents. And in Roseland, we have roughly 17 to 18,000 residents. And that uh, six acres per thousand is divided uh, half external to the city and half internal, which often includes school grounds which are not available to the public. And so there's a duplicity in counting school grounds as part of the allocation uh, for the neighborhoods. And so we've advocated that, but there's a disparity again between the deliberations that are private within the city, the Park and Recreation Department, and the neighborhood <coughs> and what they have repeatedly been saying, but when the Parks and Recreation Department ceased to exist, probably around 2010, I could be off a year or two, they didn't have records of historical uh, deliberations and meetings, and that is not a difficult thing to remedy. So that now we're in a situation where the neighborhood is almost unanimous in wanting a nature park and the city management in the Parks and Recreation has a different vision of what's appropriate. Now, we've consulted with psychiatrists and cutting edge park uh, developers, and we find that there's more therapeutic value for the neighborhood with a nature park. Uh, with Parks and Recreation Department think that's too innovative, and it might not serve the whole community, but actually the studies show that there's more therapy, there's more relaxation of tensions, there's uh, a, a dispersing of the tensions in gangs with a nature park. And we can substantiate that, but we can't get through to city parks and recreation department, and we don't know how 
they come to the conclusions that they arrive at. So that as part of open government, we would like to know how conclusions by the city are arrived at and why they have this divergence between what neighbors think is the best thing for us. All right, and thank you, sir. And there's one other thing. I need you to wrap up your comments. All right, there's traffic. We can't handle more growth and development Great. simply Th thank because- you. Thank you, sir. We, we, we need to move on to the next person. Yeah, but we have issues that don't get yes. resolved and traffic is a huge one in our neighborhood. Thank okay. you. Okay, thank you. Anybody else for public comment for items not on the agenda? Yes, sir. Could we, I, I think we could bring the mic to you. Yeah. Yeah, I think, that, uh, yeah. <laughs> I don't think the camera will get you, but I think uh, you're good. No, that's all right. <laughs> right. Uh, I don't expect to be in this condition past the um, the early part of next year, so. <laughs> but it's been a long time. Um, I wanted to comment about the Brown Act. Um, I have served on the Housing Authority since 2010 and have had multiple ethics trainings and uh, really kind of came to the conclusion after years of thinking about it that the Brown Act is frequently um, interpreted in a mindset that I think is kind of contrary to its purpose. Its purpose is to provide for open government and frequently its application seems to be reducing the amount of communication that the public can have. And so I started to do some research on that topic and um, I found uh, on the internet a publication um, by the California League of Cities, which is where the Brown Act was written back in the 1950s. And the author of that paper is a partner at a law firm that I have heard of Best Best and Krieger. They have consulted with the city on matters related to redevelopment in my own experience. And I'll just read you this brief portion. The Brown Act does not prohibit individual members of the legislative body from separately providing their own commentary and opinions about a matter. And it goes on to say, nor does the Brown Act um, prohibit one-way communications which means that a member of a legislative body is permitted to make their commentary to the rest of the members of the body um, by inclusive email. So that, that is uh, one piece of information. I subsequently had conversations with the legal department at the League of Cities and um, I did some further research and found a August 30th, 2018, um, update on the Brown Act that was had been was presented to the Santa Clara County uh, Office of Education or Board of Education and there is a clarification there you know it, this interpretation of what constitutes serial meetings etc um, but one-way communications or, or even a board member to the rest of the board is not expressly prohibited as long as it does not implicate uh, the reaching of a collective concurrence. So, you know, there is a line there, but rather than making a brick wall there, we need to define lines in our interpretation of the Brown Act. And very frequently, I think there have been walls created that inhibit communication, not only from the general public, but also among the members of a legislative body. So I would hope we can get enough outside new information. Because a lot of this, I think, comes from the early age of uh, email and the advances that have come in the use of the internet give us more options. Great. Thank you. Thank you much, sir. Is there anybody else for public comment? Okay. So we will go on to, uh, everybody has three minutes for public comment for items not on the agenda, and then we move on to what is on our agenda. So we'll move on to item four. Uh, it is the draft open government sunshine ordinance. Uh, hopefully everybody has a copy. Uh, if not, there are extra copies over there. Uh, and just to walk through it a little bit so that everybody understands sort of uh, what the intention is of how we will do this, I apologize in advance. It's probably gonna be a bit tedious. 
Uh, we have in front of us a number of documents. We have the ordinance, which if you will remember from our last meeting, there were two ordinances, the original, and then there was the red line version after the first wave of input had come back on the ordinance back in 2016, is that correct? We have accepted those red lines as our starting point for our discussions on this ordinance today. Uh, today's intention is to walk through uh, article, if we wanna run through article one, there's a couple of comments, article two, and if we have time, we'll get to article three, otherwise we'll, we'll punt article three until our next meeting as well. With that document, you also have a separate document right here that are touch points from discussions uh, both in the Open Government Task Force report as well as from our previous meetings with an understanding of what does the draft ordinance say, what is the Brown Act requirement, what is the current practice, and what is the uh, recommendation within the task force report. And we'll ultimately be walking through these parts of the ordinance to determine how are we going to uh, structure the language. We'll have that discussion on the article in this uh, open public forum. I'm gonna then take my uh, attempt to do a red line based on the comments that I hear from council members and from the public. And within a week of this meeting, my goal is for us to have then the red line re-uploaded for folks to see what the suggested red lines are. And then we'll be discussing each section as we go through it. And at the end, we'll discuss it again in its totality, hopefully reflecting everything uh, that we agree upon here today. Does that work for staff? We'll see some nodding heads from the public. If you all like that idea as well, great. Uh, so with that, Kalua, do you wanna start us off? Sure, so n before we get started, another way to look at it is, it is that although there's 10 or 12, 15 pages of the ordinance, what we really did is look through it and try to identify decision points. And so those decision points we've attempted to summarize here. So rather than parsing every single word that's in the draft, what we really tried to focus on is where are there things that actually are decisions that are po kind of policy in nature. And so we can start, um, uh, essentially we, our first comments start on page four and we start immediately with a discussion about um, notice. Well, before we, before we start on page four, I do wanna give the, the public a chance to weigh in on article one, which is the definitions uh, and I, I did have a, a couple of questions that I personally had walking through the ordinance uh, that hopefully I can uh, get staff to address beforehand. So I'm gonna start actually on uh, page two. And can I add one thing before you get started? Yeah, absolutely. So the other um, caveat is that this first section, which is called um, findings and purpose, really represents the recommendation and the language from the task force report. So we're gonna be retitling that. So we didn't wanna change what they ex had as expressed intent. And so that, that section came actually from the task force recommendation. Yeah, that's really helpful to hear, thank you. So specifically at the bottom of page two, section D, the citizen's guidebook. Uh, and for the, for the public, it says, Citizens Guidebook means a reference tool for residents of the city of Santa Rosa that outlines city government structure, organization, responsibility, and basic function, and goes on from there. Um, who is going to write that? And what is the a timeline associated with that? And is that potentially a deliverable of this committee ultimately? I can't imagine that it would be a deliverable from this subcommittee. I think it would ultimately be staff or um, kind of the most expedient way would actually be to identify something that some other jurisdiction has actually done and build on that. I don't think that it would be efficient for us to start from zero. And um, we'd have to do some research on kind of what that timeline might look like. It's a pretty heavy lift. So um, it's not something that I think we would do during the, during the life of this subcommittee unless you went on for a while. Yeah, so we do have on the uh, future agenda items a, a discussion um, related to this. I'm looking for the language in, in front of me. Um, Where did they refer to the Citizens Guidebook in the rest of the document? So it, it's just, it's from the Open Government Task Force. Yeah. Because it says, uh, the following words and phrases shall have the meaning specified below. Well, the following, so they show that they have the, the phrase, word and phrase, but I'm not, I've never 
you know, other than that definition, it's in there. I missed it. Right. So does that help with whether or not it's something that we want to tackle? How, wh where, what is the level of importance of that guidebook? Well, it, it is in the um, Open Government Task Force as a recommendation. And one of the things we did discuss in the first two meetings was potentially doing uh, uh, a one sheet on the website of a how to <coughs> engage style document. And perhaps mm -hmm. uh, when we have that discussion towards the end of, of this work product, that would be the appropriate time for us to see if there's a nexus here between the how to engage in the um, citizens guidebook, and I'm, I'm probably just mixing terms at this point, but um, I, I do want to. I did want to put a pin in it before we went on to page three and page four. It's a uh, it's I a good thing to have. <laughs> yeah, go ahead, Julie. I, yeah, no. Julie, go ahead. Um, I just want to make sure that this guidebook and other things that are referenced here are either available on the website or have a link <laughs> on our website so that people can readily find anything that we make a reference to. So if we're having a citizen's guidebook that's in English and Spanish, if we do that, not just a single sheet how to engage government, but there should be a link and the guidebook should be findable on the web? Yeah, I totally agree. Okay. Uh, it doesn't say that. It says make it available in English and Spanish, but doesn't say on the web. And if I may, through the chair, mm -hmm. um, the reference is on page 10 in subdivision F, and it does uh, indicate that the community engagement director uh, would um, create uh, the guidebook. Um, and I would also mention that um, although it is on page 2 listed in the definitions, I think we'll want to look at um, some of this structure, some of the definitions really get into policy and are not purely definitions, and we may want to shift some of those provisions into the substantive provisions of the code rather than in the definition. Okay. Um, and, and do you have, and we'll, we'll come to the public in a few, do you have any in particular that you want us to flag that for? Um, the two that I would flag that for is the citizen's guidebook. We could have a definition there, but um, but we should also, um, things like making it available in English and Spanish should be in the provision that says it should be prepared. <coughs> the other um, definition that I thought was more substantive than definitional is the open by default. I think at some point we also need to talk about open by default in terms of not just that the information is open, but that it is available, like posted. I mean, some data gets posted and other data doesn't get posted. It may, it may be that we don't want to post absolutely every document, but at some point we need to have a conversation about what data is posted and readily available. I don't know if it goes under open by default or not. Okay, that's a, a good discussion for us to put a pin in to come to, uh, and, and that, that notice uh, has been made. So. Thank you. And then, uh, and again, I apologize, folks, it, it'll be a little bit tedious. Uh, on page three for Sue, the G, the definition of meeting, I actually looked up government code section 54950. It actually appears that it's all of chapter nine of the government code that references meetings, and so if you could take a look and see if it's more appropriate to reference this as chapter nine than by putting in the specific sections within chapter nine, um, just in case there's amendments that come out of uh, Sacramento as well. Yes, I'm, I'm happy to do that, and I'll do that for a number of these. Um, uh, also, F, the legislative body, the meeting, um, and I was gonna compare the definitions that are already set forth in the Brown Act, and I think it would be helpful for us to be consistent with the Brown Act. Yep, yep. And actually, uh, Chapter 9 of the Government Code is, is the Brown Act, so. Exactly, yeah. sorry. Yeah. Great. Uh, John, any questions on Article 1? No, good. Julie, any uh, Article 1 questions? You got them. Thank you, Chris. Okay. How about from the public? Is there anybody who has a question on Article 1 specifically? participation in particularly expediting citizen involvement 
And without that, we would get lost in policies and rules. And so by having that focus on how we as citizens of Santa Rosa can participate, that's the editorial key. Okay. Mr. DeWitt. Well, let's go ahead and give you the uh, microphone so folks can hear you. Thank you, sir. The idea that I took away from the original open government task force meetings was the effort was afoot to make things simpler for citizens, simple folks, mm -hmm. not complex folks who have a lot of training be able to understand how to participate in our local government as well as possible. I think it's really important that the Citizens Guidebook be looked at as something that could be put together. There are models of those from the um, American Planning Association, the uh, ICMA, which is a uh, management organization, uh, state, nationwide, excuse me, and other groups that have already done this, the US EPA. I, I apologize, what was the first one you said? American Planning Association. The next is ICMA, uh, it's an International Management Association. City Management, right. Um, <clears throat> then just follow that basic approach of making it simple right from the first page on and let people get the things they need to use. Next under H, minutes. For a number of years now, the city has switched over to what they call action minutes. And <coughs> if you went to a meeting 20 years ago, the it, minutes would actually... And I don't want to be rude, Duane, but we are going to get to minutes later in this meeting. Well, you're not being rude. Okay. I'm just pointing out that it needs to be more than action minutes. You need to return to the old policy that basically summarized what people said. Like if we leave out of here today and you say no action was taken, no one will know that we gave you this much time of our valuable time also. Communities members' time is just as valuable as the paid staff and the others. Thank you for your time. Absolutely. Anybody else? Absolutely. Thank you, my name is Lee Dibble and um, on page two under paragraph D, you talk about, uh, towards the last three or four lines, you talk about the task force to ensure the public has an adequate opportunity. I would like to see you add early and adequate opportunity um, because some of the issues that have been discussed, to my knowledge, are there just hasn't been enough time or publication of of the, the uh, documents necessary. So could, I'd like to could see you that. Could you repeat where that was? That's under Oh, in D. C, I apologize, I heard D. D. Oh, okay. Uh, up in the third, third line from the bottom, it says to ensure that the public has an adequate opportunity, I would like to see early an adequate Can opportunity. Oh. I believe it's yeah, in it F. It, it is uh, page two. It is C, right at the very top of the page. Okay, well, I'm, I took yeah. the one that I so got off, printed off uh, the internet today. <laughs> section 1-10.010, the findings and purpose, subsection C. It's yeah. okay. it, And if I may, it's also in subsection F. Third, third line from the bottom of F. Has it? Yes, okay. Thank you, thank you for finding it. <laughs> Uh, we are going to talk about minutes later because yes. I had some comments on yeah, that we will. paragraph. Okay, on the other one, I'm going to have a different paragraph. But on page three, there's a talks about open data portal. That paragraph. Mm -hmm. You use the word in their new website, and I, I think you should just say website. Why are you delineating new? because that could mean if you've got one under development, you don't have to put it in the existing website, et cetera. Yeah, it was right. new then. <laughs> yes. And it's going to be new again. I think, the, I think the internet was new when we started this. <laughs> uh, that's all I had for wordsmithing at this point. Thank for, you. Is there anybody else before we go on to Article 2, public access to meetings? 
Great. And I think that this uh, article is going to be the, sort of the meat and the potatoes of, of what we're looking at. So just to walk through it, and, I, and I, again, apologize for it being a bit tedious, but I'm going to look first at section B, no later than, or subsection B, I should say, no later than 12 business days before a regular council meeting of the city council, the city clerk's office shall post on the city website and at the official posting location at City Hall a preliminary agenda containing a meaningful description of each item of business to be transacted or discussed at that meeting, uh, at the meeting. That's uh, from the, as I understand it, uh, from the Open Government Task Force and it is where we will start uh, Kahlua uh, with uh, uh, the decision points that we have here. Uh, as you'll notice from your second document, the Brown Act uh, asks for three days notice. The current council policy is the 12 calendar days as opposed to the 12 business days uh, that was in the original draft ordinance. Uh, that is uh, a bit of a substantive difference. Uh, and so I'm gonna uh, pause there and see if uh, either council member has uh, a thought on allowing the suggested change of 12 calendar days as opposed to 12 business days. Excuse me, sorry, the reverse. Well, I'll weigh in on that I have heard over, over and over and over again the difficulty in adhering to 12 business days. I'm not sure how to, um, how, how long have you, what are you currently dealing with? Are you dealing with calendar or business? Because it. Currently we're doing, um, Nine, nine, yeah, and it's nine biz mine uh, calendar, calendar days. days. Calendar. Okay. Mm -hmm. So if you w were to go to, and that's only for the preliminary, right? So that. It's okay. So w one of the things that I had heard that would be that would be very very helpful, um, it's kind of a compromise actually, is to sh shorten the number of days necessary for um, the preliminary, but to make the these future items very, very clear about what we're looking at, at, at in the future, make the definition or the um, description of those items really clear. You know that little, the, the second the, piece the on the bottom? Are we referring to the upcoming meetings? Upcoming. Yes. That you be more clear on what's upcoming so that it needn't be necessarily on the preliminary with that kind of notice, but that the, the, it gives the public um, enough opportunity to, especially if they're interested in a particular item, to find out um, what is what that item is, because it's pretty it's pretty cryptic right now. And one of the members of the of the task force said mentioned to me that yes, it would be it, it, the the more an advance notice we have, the better. But a compromise would be that that uh, that those future items be m better described, so that it's clear what we're talking about. Uh, and this, these are future items, um, and that would take some of the pressure off the need to have, for instance, 12 business days, which seems um, like a long time to me. I mean, I, I, I'm not sure how the staff would deal with 12 business days. And I'm going to ask specifically to, to Sue, since I know your office is one of the most heavily impacted. Um, is 12 calendar days achievable, and is 12 business days achievable? Um, the answer is anything's achievable. What's going to happen is um, it takes a certain amount of time for any agenda item to go through the process to get the reviews. It goes, it, there's a long list of departments that each item goes through, finance, legal, environmental, um, and, and so forth. Um, what moving, uh, expanding the time that you have to post beforehand is going to, the result is going to take longer for items to get to council. So things that we can post now nine days in advance, um, moving it to 12 days, 12 business days, what adds another almost a week. Almost a week. Um, and so it's just going to take that much longer for items to get to you. Um, it does then the other issue that happens is that there will be, um, in many instances, there will be things that happen during that time frame that will require more updates, uh, so forth, when it gets to council. So 
in terms of workload, the date, the due date doesn't change the amount of work, um, but it changes how, how quickly you as council will see things. All right, Council Member Combs, do you have any thoughts? Sorry, I was on mute. I, I have some concerns about the next sentence that follows that sentence about contacting people by email. Is it appropriate to go there, or are we still on the 12 days? Uh, go, ahead, go ahead and go there, but I'd also still like to hear your thoughts on the 12 days. I, I think the 12 days is a good idea. Um, and, 12, and I'm I, I apologize, 12 the, business days or 12 calendar days? Yeah, I think that makes business days make sense because it's very difficult for groups to organize over the weekend anyway. So folks who want to make public comment or neighborhoods who want to make public comment, it's very, very difficult for them to use weekend days. Um, you know, a lot of folks are only on their Internet. That's why we have Cyber Monday. Um, it is, that was when people came back to the office and got on their computers. Um, so it's it's helpful to, to, I think, call it business days. Um, the concern I have with regard to the email lists has to do with people who have offered uh, that they are very interested in a specific topic, but don't reliably get an email when that topic comes up. And the general, there is a new agenda notice uh, requires that you go and look at the agenda to make sure your topic is, is coming up or not. Is there another place in this document where we say folks want to be on a specific subject matter list, get noticed for that subject matter? So I, I'll let staff answer that, but uh, one of the things that I think we're going to need to be a little bit cautious on is, while I agree with you, this is the policy, not the implementation. And so if we want the policy to be that we have that capability, uh, let's let's try to dictate that. But, um, but yeah, I, I see Daisy's looking at me. Uh, so I have actually had interest um, where individuals wanted to get a specific topic and they wanted to be alerted to that. And Granicus does have a mechanism in place so that the person could um, sign on, subscribe to that specific insight page, and then they can get the notification immediately as soon as that the agenda is published or even when the record is created, they automatically get an email saying that this is expected to go on a specific council meeting date. And I've actually had several people call me and saying that they loved the feature because they were just getting that one item. So if I were specifically interested in anything that had to do with climate change, for example, um, I can go into Granicus and only get notice on anything that might have something to do with climate change? That's correct. And would it know it if it used the word uh, all electric or all electric ready instead of the word climate change? That's correct because you have to put in every key term that you want to be notified on. So that key term is what's going to be important. And uh, what I've done is I've done... That. <laughs> I actually have, then that's why I'm, I'm actually bringing it up because I've had several people call me if there was a way that they can be notified of just that one item and not the entire agenda. So that's Thank the reason. You yes. Very much. That's, that really is information that I thought I had asked about and had gotten a different answer. So I'm delighted to hear this answer. Thank you. Yes. Uh, okay. And um, I'm going to go to the public really fast on specifically uh, section B. Gregory, did I see you wanted to speak on that? That's the uh, 12 day. Yeah. It, it, Posting it. For the last couple of years, it seems to me the post comes out around 5 o'clock on Thursday. Is that about right? Sometime before 5 o'clock, you try to get it up there. That's I've, correct, I've, yeah. We I've try criticized to get it you guys when you went to Friday morning, so I know what the th Thursday night is. And I'm assuming that that reflects a Wednesday calendaring, a Wednesday meeting of the mayor and, the, and the, you know you finalize it on Wednesday and you get everything up on the preliminary. And the, so two weeks ahead, 
preliminary goes up on, let's say it's a Wednesday, you're posting both the staff reports to the one that's coming up on um, next Tuesday, and you're posting the preliminary for the week bef after that. I mean, that's the pattern I've seen, is that I get both. I get a preliminary two weeks, and I get staff reports one week. Now, if you count from that Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, so five days I've got, you know, before, uh, before the next council meeting to absorb all those staff reports. And seven more days for the preliminary. So we're already on a 12 calendar day preliminary. You're not talking about final end here, but if you're going to talk preliminary and back that up, you're already at 12. So I don't understand where this nine is because nine would make you guys posting it on Sunday night. And you know you don't do that. So I'd like to make sure I'm clear on what you're proposing because 12 calendar days is what you're doing now. I really appreciated you're going to business days. And I understand that doing, going to business days is going to back it up to the point where you're on Tuesday night or Monday night before this city council meeting's meeting, you're trying to post something up. I can understand how hard that is. And so I, I'm really looking for the staff reports. I don't care when you put the preliminary up. I've got enough. The preliminary is so useless to me that it is not important that it go from 12 to 10, you know, business <coughs> to 12 calendar. You can still do it on 12 calendar. But I sure want to have the staff reports, whenever they are done, put up. And I know some of those staff reports don't wait till Thursday at 5 o'clock to be finalized. There's some staff reports that are pretty well done two weeks before. So I would like you to have the, uh, a process that gets to us as early as you can staff reports because that's the meat of what's going on. That tells me what I'm going to be facing when I'm before the council because I'm reading the same thing that the council's meeting. And I would think that the council people would, who have to vote on this is, are even more ins uh, insistent on having as early as possible those staff reports. Yep. Thank you, Greg. Dwayne? Yes, sir. Hello, my name is Dwayne DeWitt. I think it is very important that we keep one theme from the original open government task force meetings. And that was, this is about making it simpler for the public to understand and participate, not necessarily about the concerns of staff in the preparations of the reports and making them available. I believe the 12 business days is reasonable and helpful, and I think they'll quickly adjust to it once it's become part of their job description to do that as required by this. So I'm hoping that you folks will put that in there as a requirement. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, go ahead, Daisy. Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Mike. Yeah. Um, so Michael Varela, just to give a little context, uh, cab member, appointee of Mr. Rogers, and then my significant other is the city clerk, but I will keep this as... <laughs> Objective as possible. Uh, so I, I've been on both sides of uh, the the velvet rope. There isn't one here, but uh, of this, I've been a, a city council staff member down in Long Beach, a city twice as big as uh, Santa Rosa, with a lot more staff and a lot more uh, items that were brought up. And I've also been on the other side now as a as a board member for my neighborhood as association, Ridgeway Historic District. Here, I've put together a, a weekly uh, kind of legislative uh, preview. So having the, as you mentioned, the staff reports and things like that has really helped in me better inform my, my neighbors as to items that are coming up that may affect us. But that's only effective, not just because I'm putting that together for my neighbors, but because they're engaged. And I think really what we're, the business days changing that, in my opinion, isn't going to matter. If you care about something, you've already, inf you're informed or you're connected with, with a group who's going to, you know, send an alert like, hey, we got to go in and like the housing rent, um, uh, uh, I'm blanking on the term, um, the Price gouging. There we go. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> the price gouging. You know, if you're connected with one of the many groups that are organizing around that, I'm sure you got an email, you got a text, and that's really what brought a lot of the people out. It wasn't having an extra three, six, nine days to review something 
uh, on, on, on the, at City Hall or on the city website. That wasn't what brought people up. So I think really, as a CAP member, as an active community member, I think we really need to focus on how can we better educate the public to be connected, to receive those gov delivery emails, to follow the city on Facebook. Everyone's on their somewhere getting the information. And what I found working with, especially the Spanish speaking uh, population here, is that a lot of us are connected through Facebook and that's how we get a lot of our news out to come out to events like this. Great, thank you. Anybody else? Okay, go ahead, John. Thank you, Chris. And I, I think that that actually um, is another way of, of re referring to what the person mentioned to me, the person that was on the Open Government Task Force, that wanted more clear definition and a, a clearer idea of timing on that advance agenda. Because it, being cryptic does not help. You know, it could just say, you know, and the timing is actually not specific, and then nor, sh nor, does it, nor should it be because it can change too easily on that advance agenda. But I think that people, people do need to understand what those items are. It can't just say gouging ordinance. Um, what gout, what are they talking about? And be, spending a little more time, and that gets reprinted each time. It's not, the definition is not gonna change. The timing may change, but the clarity of the definition will not. And I think that that will go a fair way to inform those people that are most interested in preparing for a particular item hitting the, the council. Yeah, I appreciate that, John. And I, th I think uh, to that point, what I like in the language is the preliminary agenda containing a meaningful description of each item. Um, to that point, uh, to that end, uh, I agree. I think that uh, we can do that uh, for a preliminary agenda, uh, given additional time. It, from what I've heard from most staff, it is also the finalization of the documents, uh, to Gregory's point, that takes most of the time. So I, I, I have no problem with 12 business days for the preliminary agenda. Uh, and then we'll move down after this uh, to a discussion on the final agendas and staff reports and the timing of that, which I think is more significant. But uh, John, how do you f how do you feel on B? I, I, I think that anything that we can try anything and, and I would be comfortable with that. I think what part of what is concerning to me um, is, for instance, in, in December, uh, if we were to look at um, at that 12 um, business days, we, the, the item would have to hit on the 14th of December for us to discuss it on the, on the 1st of January. And that, that's a long time. And if, if, if we had an, an item that was of importance and we were two days late in getting, getting, having that come to our attention but did not rise to the level of an urgency ordinance, we wouldn't see that for a month. And that's and then another, another full week would 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 move would would happen before we would be able to see that item, and that just it just sounds terribly inflexible to me. And I, I think that we can come up with a, comp a, a compromised um, dating, and I think that what you're what you're suggesting is actually a good compromise. At least we can try it. So, are you willing to go forward with twelve business days to try it? Yes. How about you? For the preliminary. Yep, for the preliminary. And twelve calendar. Or, do, or for is this? So we'll we'll jump down you? to D in a minute. The, the okay. final it's five. Okay, right. In in here. So, so preliminary, I, I would yeah, I would I would be willing to do that. Uh, Council Member Combs. If, if I. Days, and I really do also want to repeat and, and appreciate the meaningful description um, in there, um, and if, if we can say uh, as an aside, maybe not necessarily in the ordinance that. Any documents that are available at the 12 should be linked at that time. I think that, that I, yeah, I think that can be reflected. Okay, thank you. And if I can, if I may just um, bring up, I did actually um, ask three specific departments just to tell me what it was, the impact, because I'm not the specialist in those specific departments, and really it's the three culprits who are always late. So one of them was housing and community services, and what I ended up doing was just asking them, and I interviewed them and asked them specifically how it would impact their department, or even more so, how would it impact the community, the council, um, most importantly. And so I just wanted to share a few of the responses that they gave me. So that's something that you're making a decision with a full understanding. 
Um, so Housing and Community Services talked about three specific areas. One was the homeless services submission deadlines. Um, it talked about how a lot of homelessness are requested with very little lead time and sometimes after the deadline. Additionally, these items typically request, require last minute changes and it requires further delay being addressed by the council in a timely manner. The housing trust, um, they talked about meeting the submission deadline would be difficult for bond issuances where documents are generated by bond council and outside investors. The current timelines result in documents being received from outside council close to or after the deadline. Increased the required days of advance posting would further exasperate this problem. And then federal programs. Um, these often get very little lead time for federal funding allocations, comment periods, and deadlines. These efforts are regularly unable to meet internal city deadlines for federal programs as they stand. Increased the days required of advance posting would further exasperate this problem. The bottom line, HCS said, they would love to meet the current deadlines, but circumstances are often beyond their control. And that's one department. Planning and economic development, they gave me a huge long list. Finance, another one it would impact everyone. And we'll eventually see that impact. And I just wanted to make sure that you were all aware of it before you move on to this decision. Yeah, I, and I appreciate that. And again, we're talking about the preliminary agenda, uh, not necessarily the, the final documents. And there is, we'll get there, subsection H, which perhaps we should have discussed already, uh, notwithstanding subdivision F, so that's the correction or supplement of an item already in the agenda packet. Uh, the city council may take action on items of business not appearing on the posted agenda under any, under any of the following conditions. And that talks about determination of a majority vote of the city council, that an emergency exists, showing of good cause with the majority of those present, an urgent item or business may be discussed and acted upon if the item appears on the revised regular meeting agenda released to the public at least five days ahead of time. The council shall determine that good cause exists prior to taking action upon the item. If, uh, what, I'm, what I'm trying to point out here is there may be a mechanism in this red line where we build in, uh, in the event of FEMA spurs something on us at the last minute or, or bond council has an issue that there's a good faith effort for us to maintain this 12 business days lead time on the preliminary and then still have uh, action taken when it needs to be taken. And, and, and perhaps it's, it's the way that we word it, but, but the ordinance does contemplate that as well. And, and from discussions with the public, they understand that that happens as well. It's just making sure that when appropriate and when, a, when it's not just us dragging our feet, that they have time to weigh in. So, go ahead, John. I wonder if, um, in, in respect to their, their concerns, that we, examine our um, H and look at and, and talk to them about those, those circumstances where they are looking for special dispensation on their time and to be able to drill in a little bit, find out how often these circumstances occur, do get a, a little more, um, a little clarity so as not to create anxiety in the department. And I'm just kind of wondering how often those items that are of a t have a time constraint that the, where they are having a problem are th really in that much uh, uh, what a concern or interest to the community. So not to, not to second guess them, but to drill in a little more about what are those circumstances and to, and to do a carve out under H and to create a, um, uh, the, uh, an exception for them um, once we find out how often these things happen and what's the nature of the, of their, of the constraint, the, the legality, the, the state requirements, federal requirements, because I don't want to, to, to tie up um, and, uh, and keep them from going forward with an item that, that actually is almost a, a technical environment as opposed to something of interest to the community. And get a little, see if we can give them a carve out that lessens their anxiety about it. So I think what I'm going to try to do, if I can, can move the agenda a little, because uh, I don't want us to, to bog down too much. I think what I'm going to do is I think I'm going to try to suggest language 
uh, for the red line going forward that really addresses sort of this concern while also maintaining what we've heard from the public as a desire. And so again, the way that we'll do this process is within the next week, I will offer that language as red line uh, as an available document. And then at our next meeting, there'll be an opportunity for the public to weigh in on, on sort of that, that uh, verbiage and see if, if, see if we need to make changes or see if we've hit it. Uh, but I am gonna move on from the, the 12 business. May, may I? Yeah, it, yeah, yeah, we're we're mo Lee, we're mo we're moving on to that section right now. So, uh, so for section D, uh, jo Julie, hold on. Yeah. That the red line you're talking about offering is in is in section H on page five. H is in Herald. Uh, I don't know if it'll go into Section 8 or if it'll go into Section B, but it will... H, as in Harold. Yeah, I, I understand. I, I don't know until I actually um, look at how to structure it, but the intent, okay. the intent of H will be brought into Section B in some way. Either H or B uh, makes sense. Thank you. I just wanted to clarify. Yep, absolutely. So I'm going to jump down to Section D, which is really, I think, the crux of the, the conversation, which is the final agendas and staff reports will be posted no later than five business days to the city's website and at the official posting locations at city hall and be made available at the front counter in the city manager's office and i think that that's really the, the section regardless of the preliminary when it goes on the agenda and, and uh, note taken on accessibility for the public I, I think where it really comes down to is with those final agenda documents the five-day lead time to make sure that folks have time to read them and be able to engage not only their own neighborhoods uh, so that people are paying attention, but then to come back and engage council members as well. Um, and, and I don't see this, was, this was one of the decision points. So final agendas, five business days. Uh, Santa Rosa's current practice is that five business days, though there are times where we have uh, revised agendas that come to us literally up to the day that we uh, have the meeting, which I think is really the problematic aspect that I'm going to open it up to folks to talk about. Um, but John, first, I want to get your thoughts on this. Well, it's, it, and I'm not sure how, how common it is that we get um, important changes to our, to our agenda and where, where the information, th sometimes there's a, there is accuracy in accuracy issues, so they will they will they will submit something to us, a correction, but I'm I'm not sure how often a substantive change is presented to us the day of a council meeting. Yeah, and uh, and I'll go to Julie in a second. The other part of this conversation that I think needs to be mentioned is that we do do quite a bit of wordsmithing also from the dais on final uh, final uh, ordinances and resolutions, which then we do have an opportunity to still discuss them. So how do we, what I'm looking for is how we strike that balance between providing the information that the public needs to weigh in meaningfully while also still uh, preserving our ability to have that public conversation around ordinances. Councilmember Combs, do you have any thoughts? Uh, well, I, I think that for me, the key was in B as in boy, uh, making sure that there's a strong and meaningful explanation 12 days out makes the five business days tolerable. It's still very difficult because it's Thursday over the weekend to Tuesday. It's not, it's not like you get it Monday for a Friday meeting. Um, so the keeping it at, it, it's my understanding that, um, it isn't a full five business days now. Um, it's Friday, Monday, Tuesday, right? So we're we're expanding it to five business days from five calendar days. Yeah, correct. It, it, if that's possible, then then yes. Um, and I think F um, the the features of F we can talk about when we get to F. Yeah, so what I'm saying between, let's, let's talk about them together. So between D and F, you have 
final agendas and staff reports five business days out, and then a correction or supplement five actual days out, as I read it. The fifth calendar day prior to the city council meeting. So what we currently do is section F. The ordinance contemplates doing D, which is five business days out. Uh, and I think that that's where um, we've talked about some of that impact. So five business days out from the council puts it on the council day. Uh, on the council day. <laughs> yeah, right. So I don't know how you would do that. Yeah, and I don't know how the city clerk would do that. Well, that's okay. <laughs> You'd, they'd have to give you back the person you've already lost, and then another person on top of that, I think. So, all right, I'm going to take public comment on this. Go ahead, Gregory. Go ahead, sir. Issue, you can slide a lot of different uh, orientations into that, and so there should be definition that includes the inclusion of all perspectives on, a, on an issue. Otherwise, it can be politicized. Okay. Thank you, sir. Anybody else? Yes. Dwayne? Hello, my name is Dwayne DeWitt. More time is better, especially for the public who may not be as savvy as many of the uh, groups you've spoken about. I do believe that it's really important also that the communications that come from various neighbors of projects and things also be made available. I remember coming to one of the first city council member, excuse me, city council meetings that I attended in my adulthood about 25 years ago, and there was a woman there dealing with an issue on Terry Road, Terry Lane perhaps, and um, she didn't know that other people had also been concerned about what was happening until she got there on the day of the hearing, basically, and saw that there were some things in the file. So. I appreciate the gentleman next to me and his comments about Facebook. Um, does the city have a Facebook page? Okay, I didn't know about that, and I don't follow those things on Facebook. I'm not big on dealing with um, internet stuff that that well, and I believe there are many people in the community who just want a more traditional approach of give them more time, have the files available, let people read these things. They're sometimes very deep and complex with lots of pages. Thank you for the time. Thank you, Dwayne. Okay, anybody else? I'll see you later. Yeah, David Harris, I'll just comment. I mean, the idea that the city clerk's office is supposed to be putting something out on the Tuesday when there's a council meeting going on, you know, that's not practical, you know, uh, and just how to steer around that. I mean, but this five business days takes you to, as you in, uh, pointed out, to the previous 
uh, time of, of a meeting. You know, there may or may not have been a meeting then, but um, I think you can wrestle through to, to something that's a little more reasonable than having a deadline at the time that the previous week's council meeting would be going on. But I, I note the reference here to government delivery, and I assume that that's some piece of related to Granicus's uh, registrar, but you know, I, actually, I don't know what that means, and I do know that that's you know that's all a moving target. The kind of things that are available uh, to facilitate these things being posted, and uh, uh, maybe that's a topic that we would get into. Is uh, I don't know how many years we've had Granicus, but I know that that space is get have more and more offerings provided and. Uh, I'm certainly not up to date on it, but uh, uh, that might be a topic that would answer some of these questions. All right, thank you, sir. Uh, so I'm gonna uh, make a suggestion. Uh, how about for this section, uh, maybe the verbiage says something to the effect of um, staff will make every effort to have final documents four days, four business days, no later than four business days from the meeting, something of, of that nature, which I think then gives staff, if you're just completely slammed, which I know happens to departments, that uh, you're still making the effort to get that there. Uh, otherwise, uh, it, it still has the intent of giving people more lead time. Uh, go ahead, Sue. Uh, what, one second, Julie. Um, if I may, um, that becomes a very difficult standard to enforce, um, and there's certainly going to be disagreements between the staff feeling they're very slammed and the public feeling that they're not, so. Uh, sorry, Julie, go oh, ahead. Yeah. Thank you. Um, I, I have some concern about the, the sort of wiggle room in that language and, and would take the advice of the city attorney on that. I have, I have another comment though. Um, does it make sense at some point point and I don't know if it belongs here or in a policy or other administrative document can we separate out some of the larger reports that are harder to read and more difficult to get through you know sometimes we get a huge thick thing to read on Thursday night and it, it does it make sense for us to talk about sort of the size of the document and the time so that people have more time to process. I, I appreciate that that's may not be the only reason people need additional time. For example, sometimes you want to ask the staff a question, and if you get the document on Friday and, and it's a RDO day and there's no staff in on Friday, and the, then you only have Monday in which to ask the clarifying question, really. So that's why I, th I have some concern about you know, how many business days, because it would be really helpful to give folks enough business days to have a question and answer from staff, recognizing that we have Friday RDO, RDO days. So that was two points I'm asking about. Yeah. Uh, John? Well, I just, I kind of wondered, this kind of begs the, the question of, of being a little more bold, perhaps, in the future, and that would be, sh should the council meeting change to Wednesdays? I mean, that would be, I don't know of any city that does, they usually do them on Mondays or Tuesdays. Um, not sure why Wednesday's never chosen. Maybe it's because they just don't do it on Wednesdays. I don't know, but it, it would, it, it, could, it could cause that to happen. I mean, then maybe that discussion needs to take place. I think that the, the it's the staff reports, that's really where I g gain my information as well. I mean, I, and the staff reports are, are rarely any more than, than usually the three or four pages, sometimes thir seven to 13, 14 pages, um, usually on, 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 that's pretty typical. But change, making this kind of change, we either have to re st staff up the city clerk's office, which is understaffed right now, and have that conversation during uh, our budget talks, um, or potentially change the date of the council meeting. I don't see how we can have, I don't see how we can do it, have it both ways, you know, without making a pretty substantive change in your office or our council meeting date. Is the date of the council meeting set in the charter or is that option a choice that we have? Um, that was exactly what was going through my mind. Um, and I do think that it's in the charter. We, we can we can conf we can confirm that, but I don't have my. Okay, so uh, Julie, 
uh, what are what are your thoughts here? Where would you like to go with this? Uh, I agree with John that we need to address staffing issues for the clerk. Um, I like switching to a business day rather than calendar day count and could do four business days. Um, I do think we need to address when we get, for example, um, a large, a very large report like the trash contract was. Um, that people should have more time with it. And I don't see a way that we've addressed, you know, consent items are given the same amount of time as uh, something major like a water or trash contract deal. Yeah, and I, and I don't know how we adjust uh, in ordinance, to be clear, in ordinance, um, how to address the difference in size. Now, if if it was a, if it's the mayor, the mayor can uh, have a commitment or, or make a, a decision that um, that those items will be set on the agenda with an appropriate amount of time for the public to be able to weigh in. Uh, but I'm not sure how we, in an ordinance, legislatively, dictate that attribute. Uh, John, what are your thoughts on this section? Well, I, you know, are you talking about the length, the, the size of a, of, of a of an item, well, something like the garbage contract was was available to the to the to the public long before we dealt with it as a, as, a, as a council. Now it's a draft or a, a draft contract, but um, there would there would have been plenty of time for the community to to um, digest an entire contract. It's very very large, probably not of much interest to many, uh, but it would have been available to the community long before um, five days or or twenty days for that matter. I, I think it was it was available long before we ever saw it. So and I, preliminary with that, um, would, uh, that would satisfy my concern. Um, I'm just not. Sh it's just not clear to me how we write an ordinance that says, you know, if it's a big important thing, link the draft. <laughs> yeah, th that's right. And I do have in uh, section B for the preliminary. I did have a note to add language that you suggested about when, uh, when, when possible to have documents posted when they're available, right? Uh, and I don't have the exact language down, but the idea being, like with the garbage contract, if it was on the preliminary, but the draft had been done two weeks before, that it would link to that, that draft as well. Um, so, I, so I do have that covered in section B, but Sue, go ahead. Oh, I just simply wanted to um let you know that I did pull up the charter, and yes, the charter provides that the meeting shall be on Tuesdays. Okay. Um, I think uh, I am happy for us to give it a try doing four business days, which puts it close of business on Wednesday, uh, giving the public an additional day. Uh, I think that that uh, splits the difference, and, and we see what the impact on staff would be. Uh, and if it doesn't work, it doesn't work, and we come back and we have that discussion and change it. Um, but I, I, I'm, I'm comfortable with trying four business days. Uh, if I could just chime in real quick and let you know that on Wednesdays um, after our Tuesday council meeting, in the Wednesdays is when we actually review the agenda with the chair, with uh, the mayor, the vice uh, mayor, and then also with staff to uh, talk about all the agenda items. So I just want to make sure that that you're aware of that because that just is going to impact everyone because usually there's a lot of last minute changes that happen from that meeting and that adds on and that's why we have to publish on Friday because the impact has actually affected the whole Wednesday afternoon and then Thursday on into the very late evenings on Thursdays. <laughs> well, the, you know, and Chris and I have both been in that in that room while those changes happen. And it is, it can be a bit of, of a, a time flurry uh, on those Wednesdays. You know, at the end of the day, then this has been the one of the items that has that has caused the most concern with staff and their ability to, uh, prov to function and to respond to this kind of, of request. Um, What's going to happen after we go through this process is we're going to they, they, it'll go back to the council, a recommendation to council, the the city manager, and all of those, all the all the staff will be weighing in. The council will hear that testimony and decide whether they um, and and the impact. There will be impacts discussed. 
uh, by staff to, to, to the full body, and then they will, um, the full body will decide uh, whether to go in one direction or another. So we could, all we can do is what the best we can do here, and then uh, get there, find out the, dig a little deeper when it goes back to staff, and when it goes back to the full body, and have them uh, chew it up a little more and decide whether they want to go forward with it. We can only do what we can do, and, do, and the best we can do. Julie, last thoughts? Well, it, I think we're we're better holding on to the four business days. Maybe we give it a trial run, before, you know, and see how it goes. Um, it concerns me. What I'm hearing is that um, the Wednesday is a is a good day from staff's perspective for doing the uh, amendment update, setting the agenda for the next week. Um, it may be that we need to move it a week out then and go to the prior Wednesday so that we're running even further out. I appreciate that that sounds more difficult, but it does give the staff time to make the changes um, for the Thursday posting the previous week rather than the Wednesday posting we're talking about. I think let's go with the four business days and then consider whether we need to back it up further for staff's convenience. Yeah, and uh, I I will make that note, and uh, the draft, the red line, will reflect four business days. I also think the other variable in this is that the mayor uh, and, and staff should discuss moving the agenda-setting meeting if having it in the middle of Wednesday ends up being uh, an issue. I'm fairly certain the charter does not stipulate that agenda-setting happens Wednesday uh, at 11 o'clock, but uh, if there's a, a potential to do it, uh, call it right before the uh, the council meeting, call it Monday, call it first thing Wednesday morning, something to give staff more lead time as well. Um, let's let's consider that as well. But I think the overall intent is a solid one. Sue? Um, I, will, I, I was just going to mention that Mondays and Tuesdays uh, tend to be very full and busy days in preparation for the council meeting. Yep. So um, it, it's a practical uh, issue, um, and whether it get, means that the meetings get postponed yet another week, which means we're looking at a pretty lengthy time to get anything to council, um, but we can certainly talk about different options. Great. Let's go ahead and move forward on this uh, as we are coming up on 730 uh, pretty quickly here, and we're only a couple of pages in here. So I, I think we'll finish uh, page, let's try to get through the end here of uh, this particular section, uh, and then we'll, we'll stop at broadcast of meeting, uh, broadcast of meetings, and pick up there at the next meeting. Um, I did want to go to section G really fast. Uh, no action or discussion shall be undertaken on any item not appearing on the posted agenda, except that members of a policy body may respond to statements made or questions posed by persons exercising their public testimony rights to the extent of asking a question for clarification, providing a reference to staff or other resources for factual information, or requesting staff to report back to the body at a subsequent meeting concerning the matter raised by such testimony. So... Practically speaking, we have a, uh, call it a body rule, that during public comment, we don't respond and get into back and forths with folks. I think that uh, a way to do this, and I'm going to throw this out to the council, uh, is uh, allow for an opportunity at the end of public comment for us to ask staff to follow up to ask staff to respond back to somebody and make that one of our standing rules. I know we do it typically, but I also know that there are often times where folks are standing in bewilderment at the microphone as they're asking questions and getting no response from the council because that's generally how our policy is. Uh, again, to prevent a back and forth that is goes a little bit awry uh, in those situations that might deviate on the Brown Act violation, I, I would like us to build into this section that at the end of public comment, there's an opportunity for council members to dictate to staff or direct staff based on answering questions. Uh, John? Yeah, I, I think that we need to be um, find some kind of vehicle to respond. I'm uncomfortable with the final um, uh, line here where it says, um, 
uh, let's see, or requesting staff. If someone's going to be requesting staff to do anything, it should be the council. I don't think someone from the, in the audience should be requesting staff to report back to the body at a subsequent meeting concerning the matter raised by such testimony. That, that, that speaks to what you just mentioned, Chris. If, the counts, if a council member hears, a, hears some, uh, a, a comment or a question that, that clearly merits some, a response from staff, then, then the council, one of those seven, should be hearing that and asking, and asking for a response. But I'd, I, would, um, I would not want um, a member of the, of the audience or the, the public to be telling staff to, res to come back with, with the response be based on their testimony. Yeah. Uh, Council Member Combs? I'm reading it as that members of the council, or it says policy body, but I'm reading it to mean members of the council can't ask for yeah. um, the clarification or ask that staff at the end of the comments follow up or say can a staff member get in touch with that person um that's what i'm hearing your intent to be is that am i reading that correctly that's yes. correct so we're, we'd be building into the ordinance ordinance sort of what we have as a unofficial policy that uh, some of us have adopted of, of following up right after public comment to make sure that at least the public is is heard uh, and where uh, where there needs to be follow-up that there is follow-up um, idea I'm really excited about that um, is does council report outs cause any problem under this section well so we have council reports is uh, somewhere else in the ordinance suggested or in the open government task force suggested that it occur at the end of the meeting and we'll have that discussion when we get there for sure okay, I was just gonna ask if, the, if the city attorney if this limited what we can say in council report outs no, um, this particular provision only uh, relates to a response to public comment uh, and does not, uh, does not concern the council report outs. And I, I will mention too that um, as the chair mentioned, um, there are Brown Act constraints uh, uh, with respect to the extent that, that the uh, council members can respond uh, to public comment. Yep. Uh, I think that's probably a good idea for us not to engage, get into a lot of engagement uh, back and forth during public comment. It could get pretty difficult at times. Um, but I do think uh, the reference to staff is a good idea, and I appreciate that, uh, Chris, that you've done that. Yeah, and, and I do uh, just want to uh, signal for you in the conversation about council member report outs, which is obviously where we add things on the agenda, uh, where I think we should discuss is having council member report outs after public comment, which would give us an additional, if somebody brings up an issue that needs to be uh, agendized for discussion, gives council an opportunity to say, we're gonna have this discussion. Um, but with that, I'll go to public comment really quick. Go ahead. My name's Helga Lemke, and felt that I couldn't say anything or said something that was like meaningless. So um, I think it's a very awkward way to to leave members of the audience. It feels like you're not acknowledging them at all. So I think yeah. it's a great idea. Cool. And even though you do it informally, some of you having it in the you know here would set up a dynamic that said the rest of us could counsel someone who's asking you to respond like wait till the end yep. you know so it's a process that really builds expectations on both sides and i think would improve performance great and we're going rapid fire folks right, right. Uh, just in in up. terms of wordsmithing you know what testimony shows up here i mean we're talking about public comment so why not just use a comment because testimony would suggest okay am i testifying because i was asked to make a comment no i mean most of the times you're talking about people on their own volition making comments, right? So I think testimony is a bit confusing in this context. Okay, thank you. Dwayne? Yes, I hope you'll, my name is Dwayne DeWitt. I hope you remember back to Ken Blackman. He actually would send you a letter in response to some of the things that you asked about. I have not had that happen since and have never had it happen with a council member responding to things that are important. 
So I think that one of the things that's really important here is that you understand the Brown Act doesn't say you cannot speak, okay? You have the opportunity. It's just some policy that someone along the way has instituted, and it really is uncomfortable for many people because they've come all the way there on their time to sit through a meeting and to listen, and they just want to have some sort of interaction in a positive manner. And I believe that you could do the best thing now by saying, hey, let's have that default option that you are allowed to speak to the, the general public, you are allowed to respond, and when, uh, excuse me, when a public member asks you about something specific, please try to have staff respond to it. Putting the reports at the end of the meeting is helpful for that because you can say, yes, Mr. A said that, Ms. B said this, we need to respond to that, and that will show a greater interaction in a positive manner. Thank you. Yep. Go ahead. That's an important inclusion I'd because use that. it represents respect uh, on the part of the consul to the public, and so that only is going to enhance the importance of public comments and uh, it acknowledges on the part of the consul that there is a wisdom in the public. <laughs> Absolutely. Sometimes. Sometimes. <laughs> so sometimes. Um, no, I, I appreciate that. So we will. I will include that language in the red line that uh, is, is circulated next, uh, and we'll we'll f do this item, and then we'll do one last opportunity at public comment on this section globally. Uh, I want to look at sections K, L, and M, uh, as flagged uh, by Kalua on a decision point. Copies of city council agendas in English shall be provided to any resident of Santa Rosa who so requests and made available in the city clerk's office free of charge no more than five business days prior to the city council meeting. Copies of city council agendas in Spanish shall be provided to any resident of Santa Rosa who so requests and made available in the city clerk's office free of charge no more than two business days prior to the city council meeting. I'd like consistency between those two paragraphs. And then finally, and copies of the agendas in a language other than English or Spanish will be made available, yada, 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 from, from that point. Uh, I just want to make sure that we have consistency between sections K and section L, that the uh, business days prior to the city council meeting is the same. Uh, and John, I'm going to open it up for you. Well, I, I, I think that that sh shows respect, and I, and I, I can't see a reason why they cut off the three days unless there are, is some um, practical you know, restraint on, on getting the, the, um, you know, the translations. And there, maybe there was, <laughs> but I'd, I'd like to, certainly like to investigate you know, what, why that constraint is or why that change is there. I, we should make every effort to make them equal. Councilmember Combs? It, it sounds as it's written, as if the uh, agenda is automatically provided in English and only translated after a request is made for it to be in Spanish. And that's why there's the delay in the two. I'm guessing that. Is that an accurate guess? Yeah. That, 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 that's correct. That, that sounds correct. Uh, what we have previously so discussed the, here is, the, is uh, consistency of doing the, it in the, Spanish as the well. The issue is, shouldn't we just do it in Spanish yeah. yep. at the same time? Uh, and I would agree with you, Chris, that we should. Um, I'm also concerned that we do closed captioning only in English. My understanding from an estimate from a couple of years ago is that it would cost about $34,000 a year to do the closed, the open captioning, excuse me, in Spanish as well as in English. And um, in the, in the uh, next section, which we'll get to at our next meeting, that is also one of those uh, recommendations. So we'll come back to that as well, Council Member Combs. Okay, I just wanted to, you know, if uh, it, it, it says the agenda is available in English, I agree with you, the agenda should be in Spanish also. Um, at what point are we going to do the reports in both languages? And that's a good question uh, for staff. Uh, and maybe we <laughs> maybe we put a pin in that one and come back to it as well. Um, so I'll add it. Thank you. I'll add it for a future discussion. Uh, and by the way, uh, this consistency between K and L, 
uh, seems to me inconsistent with section N, which is copies of the agendas in a language other than English or Spanish will be made available automatically if the threshold of that particular non-English and non-Spanish speaking population reaches or exceeds 10,000 people or 5%, uh, which to me means that the way that this ordinance is written is if you exceed 5%, so long as it's not in Spanish, you automatically get it. And so I want to make sure that there's consistency there uh, as well. And so I think we can fix that. Uh, are there any comments on that from the public? All right, Thank then, I'm, you. then I'm going to take one last quick public comment specifically on this section, uh, Article 2, Section 1-10.030. Is there anything that we missed? Otherwise, we're going to stop here for the night, and at our next meeting, we'll come back with the broadcast of meetings, the rest of Article 2, Article 3, and then make our way through our list as well. So last public comments? Mr. Mr. DeWitt. Hello, my name is Dwayne DeWitt. I believe that letter G under this section is very important, and I do hope that it will be uh, exemplified to make sure that no elected official feels they cannot talk to the public, that it's okay to interact at a meeting. Thank you. Okay, anybody else? Go ahead. Yes, David Harris, actually, uh, Council Member, Combs mentioning the RDO days caused me to start thinking that, you know, when it was every other Friday, you know, it was always confusing as to know what was when. And there's good intent in talking about business days, but there's simplicity if it was, you know, Wednesday at 1 p.m., no matter what was going on the rest of the week, you know, because you start throwing in uh, Monday holidays and then, okay, is the Friday after Thanksgiving, is that a holiday? And, and the fact that the date that you're doing these things would move back and forth is just a confusion you know if you could if you could do a fixed date in what falls in between there if it's too much days off etc well y you know you'll adjust that by pushing it to the next council meeting and and just having the simplicity of people knowing when things are going to be available by not having to know you know okay what's a holiday what isn't a holiday etc I think there'd be some benefit in just being simple and not trying to accommodate business days Anybody else? Great. And to that point, I think we can build that into the ordinance as it's written, but in the guiding citizen engagement document, perhaps it's easier for us to say you'll have it by close of business on Wednesday um, to be more clear for folks. So with that, uh, I'm going to call it a night. Thank you folks for joining. Our next meeting will be at City Hall uh, in January. That's, uh, we'll be doing our downtown for our next one at City Hall. And so I hope to see you folks there. It'll be a little bit easier to find. Thank you. Uh, I don't have the date off the top of my head. Uh, currently set for January 9th, but Council Member Sawyer is going to be out of, out of the country, so we may push it uh, for when he gets back. So. He can make a phone call. <laughs> <laughs> on, on the agenda, the very last page of your agenda, it has the dates and times. Oh, and, and I apologize. I am going to add one thing to the agenda for uh, next month as well. Uh, there are an inordinate amount of uh, cab seats that are either open or coming open. And it seems like if we can uh, have our discussion on a separate ordinance to align cab districts with the council uh, election districts, it seems like it's an appropriate time for us to have that conversation. So I'm going to ask staff to bring that to us as the first item so we can get it out of the way uh, at our next meeting as well. So, so thank you, folks. Thank you, sir.